Good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of Skull Session at Sate 2020. Uh, on this episode, we have Mr. Kunal Sampat, Country Head for Sales for Visa Lounge. Uh, Kunal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how has Sat Sate been so far? Sate has always been successful. I, I, I think it's uh, very rightly Asia's largest travel and trade fair. Uh, over the years, it has. I, I've seen Sate evolve. And uh, even this year, uh, definitely we are not uh, disappointed at all. What's the contribution uh, in your annual scheme of things from Sate alone? What percentage would... See, I, I would rather say that when it comes to any trade fair, uh, we always, not just we, I think anyone who participates in a trade fair, uh, you don't look at it as a ROI point of view. You always look at it more of a branding point of view to show people that you are present. Uh, Sate of course becomes an edge or takes the edge is because being Asia's largest travel and trade fair you know that who and who are here and the footfall that Sate has every year is I don't think there is any other trade fair that has that footfall. So let me rephrase my question then. Uh, your product is very B2B right? Uh, it's very difficult to reach out to every uh, agent whether big or small across the country and Correct. this would be a perfect meeting uh, point with them which means there would be a certain percentage of conversion or incremental growth year on year right Absolutely. 5 10 15 percent so what would be a good number to estimate at sati customer acquisition we would say anywhere around uh, so so okay where, where it comes to building a database it's a huge thing but uh, I always try and say that, okay, it's not only about collecting visiting cards. It's about finally how many registered and how many starts giving you business. So I would say that if there are 1,000 cards that we collect, eight to 900 people register on our website. Over the immediate span of one year, around 300 to 350 start working with us. And can you put some light on Visa Lounge? Sure, so uh, Visa Lounge is a part of or, or a division of Sri Siddhivinayak Travels and Tours Private Limited, which is a 19-year-old IATA company based out of Mumbai. Uh, we have a holiday division by, which goes by the name Travel Recipes as well. Uh, Visa Lounge is now three years old. So, how was Visa Lounge born? Uh, we, we've been in the travel industry quite, uh, you know, I, I more than two decades now, all of us partners, and uh, over the years we've seen the pain that people go through, especially where Visa is concerned. Visa, uh, as we all know, is the most critical part of a journey. I mean, uh, if, if you mess up on the Visa, your whole journey goes for a toss. Anything else you do do a mess, you can still re uh, rectify. But Visa, it's you, you, everything is gone. So, you need an expertise over here. You need an expertise, you need someone to know details you need someone to start thinking the way the consulates think when you are collecting documents from the paper you need to know how you profile a passenger so uh, when when we start started thinking about all those things uh, the immediate thing which uh, of course came in our mind was that how about designing a technology solution today everything is at the end of the day moving towards e-commerce and digitalization so what can we do to uh, make the whole application process seamless? Uh, how can we use technology? How can we use artificial intelligence? How can we use the tools which are being provided nowadays to, uh, you know, uh, probably, I would say, uh, ease or ease the whole process? And uh, all these thoughts, when it came together, we all sat and that is how Visa Launch was born. So since you uh, mentioned about technology, I have a related question. Most of the European countries, including uh, UK, uh, have signed the are supporting the climate change uh, treaty that have that happened in Paris. But there's a huge contradiction. Let's take UK for example. The amount of paperwork or papers that they would request, including a bank statement, I think per application it might average around 200 pages, uh, which means every 10 application they're cutting a tree down it's a straight contradiction to their stance so is it ignorance or is it uh, something technical honestly speaking uh, it's a very it's an irony uh, it's it's a very uh, it's it's a 
truth that you have just mentioned. Uh, I, I mean, in fact, while you were asking me the question, I was, in fact, I was thinking about my, my own visa applications, uh, that when was the last time I stepped into a bank? And I think the only uh, last few times that I've stepped into a bank is when I've had to go to the bank to actually get the original printout of the bank statements because uh, the banks, they do not even, uh, you know, accept the printouts that I take from, uh, the consulates don't accept the printouts which I take from the bank's website. So it's, it's a funny thing that uh, why, why should they not move towards digitalization? Today, uh, think about it this way, there are, I think around 20 million passengers travelled uh, outbound from India last year. 20 million passengers travelled outbound. Uh, if even 10 million have travelled to countries who are asking documentation per passenger, you think about an average of 10 papers. Now you do the maths. It's too less. Average, because some, some, some of the consulates are sweet, they just tell you that give the form and the passport, that's done. I thought you omitted that 10 because I want to work on that number. So, we said 20 million, 10 million sweet ones, E and out. Yeah. Which means you still have 10, 10 million passengers. Absolutely. Application form will be about 4 pages. Application form about 4 pages, your bank statement about another uh, 6 four months pages. goes to around 5 pages. 5 pages? <laughs> Okay, on an average, on an average. on an average, so five, so plus you've got your uh, passport copies, your income tax papers, your, uh, yeah, all the financial assets. So if you prepare a file, you are talking about a file getting prepared of having at least 30 papers? 30 papers, sir. So 30 into 10 million? I personally think 30 is conservative, but let's do that math, 30 into 10 million. Yes. So, so technically, uh, these uh, countries who are asking for paperwork, annually alone from India contribute to about taking about uh, half a million trees down just for paperwork and as industry leaders have you uh, taken a stance have you uh, collectively gone ahead and spoken to the uh, consulate or the uh, representative see, I, I look at it this way uh, like as I said it's it's this this is my 23rd year in the travel trade so I've been over two decades and I've seen things changing I've seen things changing uh, you know, the way we used to handle visas when I started my career, uh, the way it was handled around a decade ago, the, all the, all the evolutions that has been happening. I think uh, the solution, if you ask me, to this particular thing is, uh, and which slowly, slowly I see we are moving that way, but it's going to take a lot of time. The solution is Indian passport holders to get e-visas. As long as you've got... so. Yes, quite a few countries are adding to the list. So the more the e-visas, the more you are saved. E-visa, do you think will reduce the paperwork? Definitely, because at the end of the day, e-visas you are uh, applying, like today, Visa Lounge, when you are applying for, uh, we, we already have 37 countries where e-visas are uh, you know, provided to Indian passport holders integrated on our platform. So when you have to apply for those visas, you just have to scan the documents and email. Oh. That's a valid one, yes. You just have to upload the documents. You don't have to physically, uh, you know, print all the documents. What's your take on blockchain? The financial industry, BFSI in the industry across the world is using blockchain already. Uh, it's a pinnacle of security. It's got the best security system. It can uh, hold document and you can track from one person to uh, one uh, entity to another entity when it, uh, when it is passed and you can choose. Don't you think it's an easier mode and why aren't uh, consulate able to uh, kind of uh, adopt that versus uh, the industry? You see, honestly, I mean, I would not want to be a spokesperson of the consulate over here. But uh, see, one more thing we have to understand is that when it comes to India as a country, uh, a lot of security measures are also kept into mind, you know, while uh, all these diplomatic decisions have been taken. But as I said, the way things are moving, yes, I think we can look forward to a day coming where there will be no paperwork. And what's your projection for 2020? My projection for 2020, the way right now we are working, we are, uh, and the way we have kick-started this month, uh, I think we should be able to get a growth of around 120% over 2019. Do you think it's going to reflect with the UNWTO number of 50 million outbound travelers? Hopefully, yes. We, should, we, just, we just hope that uh, 
no unfortunate incidents happen which because because what happened uh, we all know that any any time you know a political decision is taken which results into an unfortunate incident anywhere in the globe the first industry that is getting hit is the travel industry anyways thank you that was quite an insightful session no. and look forward to seeing you again Pleasure. thank you very much thank you